Colton here from Modern Robotics. Juan mentioned recently on one of our YouTube videos, he says, I don't want to rush anything, but for the next sensor, could you explain the optical distance sensor? I'm having trouble trying to figure out how to program and understand it. Thank you. Juan, yes we can. This video is going to be about the optical distance sensor. Optical distance sensor actually does a lot more than distance. It can also measure the light reflected from a surface. The optical distance sensor is shining one light out of one element you can see on the front of a sensor, and the other element on the front of the sensor is receiving that light back in. It's going to give you an analog reading that represents how much light is coming back in. The maximum value is saturated. This means the sensing element cannot receive any more light than it's already receiving. So it's receiving all the light possible. If it's at zero, that means there is no light coming back to it that's being uh, projected from the sensor. Let's take a look at how we can measure the color of surfaces and the distance of surfaces using this sensor. We'll look at both of these individually. Here we have an optical distance sensor on the front of this robot. It's pointing out in this direction. The robot's on and I have a needle up here and this needle is gonna show you what the reading of that sensor is so that you can understand the relationship between the distance or the color and the values of the sensor. Let's take a look at this. If I have a white box and white, white objects make very good uh, um, distance readings because white reflects all the light coming towards it uh, and it's a matte surface, it's not very shiny, that's good as well. So as we come closer, you can see that we'll come closer, 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 and that value is going to increase as we get closer until it goes all the way over. As we got closer, that value increased more and more and more. So it was an exponential function. We'll look into that in just a couple minutes. Now this can be useful for things like edge detection. Let's say you have your sensors pointed down in front of the robot. You could see, hey, I'm about to run off a table because I don't see anything. And then the robot can back up and turn around and, and avoid running off the edge. You can also do things like detecting walls. This is one of my other favorites, where the Spartan is following a wall. So the Spartan is looking at the reading coming from the optical distance sensor, looking at the wall to the side of it. And if it's, if it's bigger than it wants it to be, it'll turn towards the wall. If that distance is smaller than it wants to be, it'll turn away from the wall. Very cool program. So in, in this case, we actually have a program where the Spartan can look at a hand that's in front of it and follow that hand by using the distance away from it. The other cool thing you can do with this is do things like following lines. So I've got a piece of a very white construction paper, and then I also have a um, very thick marker. So I'm going to draw on here a black line. And it will show a difference between the black and the white pieces of the paper, parts of the paper because the black part of the paper is going to reflect less light than the white part of the paper. Let's line this up with a sensor and see how that varies. It is out to 1023, 1022. If we come back a little bit, it's going to be a little more sensitive. We can actually see the different readings. So if we bring it towards that black line, you'll be able to tell right when that line hits because it dropped all the way back down. And if we go back out to white again, it'll come up a bit. It can find the edge of that line. So if we're just on the edge of the line and not on the line or on the white, it'll show a value in between. So you can see it's not jumping back and forth between black and white. It's an analog reading. It'll show you, well, I see some black and some white. Because it's looking at an area that isn't just a pinpoint. It's actually looking at a, a good size area, depending upon how far away your, uh, the object is you're looking at. So here it's probably looking at about a one centimeter in diameter area, probably about three centimeters or two centimeters away. And that's great for things like line following because you can tell if you're halfway on the line or a third of the way on the line. So check out this line following robot. It's zipping around the course because it's looking at the edge of that line using one optical distance sensor and it's using proportional control. So that means if the robot is totally off the line, it's going to turn all the way in one direction. 
if it's totally on the line, it's going to turn all the way in the other direction. And then proportionately, if it is on the middle of the line, it'll just go straight. And the drive will be proportional if it sees a little bit more line, a little bit more line, a little bit more line, or less, less, and less line. It'll change its drive proportionally, not just a bang, bang control. It's going to be nice and smooth. A servo control is what this is called. We're trying to follow just the inside edge of this line. We have a track that is one big oval. And if the robot is seen white, then we're going to move to the left. If it is seen black, it's going to move to the right. It's going to do this proportionally, so if the robot sees uh, the value immediately between what white is and black is, it's just going to go straight. Now let's take a look a little bit further into the exponential function of how close an object is to the sensor. Imagine this. We have this box that's coming closer and closer to the optical distance sensor. Now the light that is being reflected out towards the, uh, towards the box is in a 2D space. You got this a, a surface area that the light is being reflected back onto. Now, as that gets closer, you have this two-dimensional space, but it's being reflected with a one-dimensional value. So that means it's going to be an exponential function uh, with respect to how close this object is. So let's find a formula that can figure this out. We'll speed this up a bit, but to start with, what I'm going to do is write down the value that's coming out of the sensor and the distance and I'll keep reading until the value is not really changing as I bring the box further away. Okay, so here's where we got. You can see that between one and two, the reading is cut in more than half, going from one centimeter to two centimeters, cut in more than half. After that, it's cut in half again. After that, it's cut in half again. After that, it's cut a little bit less than half. And then it's only get down by about 20, and then by 15, and then about 10, and then by five. It's, it's exponentially less. So let's take a look at a graph of this for a good visualization. So here's our readings as the sensor goes from one centimeter to 17 centimeters. Now, you can see this exponential, but there's also the side that it's exponentially the opposite direction. The higher distances are giving lower values. So let's first change the graph such that it is linear. So let's take a look. We have the Readings graph, which is getting exponentially less as the distance gets greater. If we take the inverse square root, so the power to the negative 0 0.5, then we come up with a really nice looking graph. Now this is linear and it is increasing. So as our distance is greater, we are linearly increasing. Let's go one step further. What if we want to make it such that the output of the graph is actually the number of centimeters we are away from it? Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so we did two things now. One of them was to determine the range of the inverse square root values are getting out, and we scaled that to match the range of the distance. So the range of the distance is 16. The range of the inverse square root was um, about 0 0.28. So we scaled that by multiplying by 56. And then every value is off by 0 0.75. So we subtracted that 0 0.75. And now you can take a look and see that at one centimeter, our calculation brings out to be one. At two, brings out 1.92. Uh, almost three, four and something, five and something, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to 17. So you can look at this distance approximation we could put this into our code so that we can approximate what the distance actually is. 
That is the optical distance sensor. You can use it to measure reflectivity of surfaces, which varies with distance, with color, and material. We hope you found this video useful. If you have recommendations for future videos or would like to know more about specific applications for the optical distance sensor, let us know in the comments below or by emailing us at support at modernroboticsinc.com. If you have any questions or concerns, you can also email us. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so you know when the next videos are available and follow us on Twitter.